AstroStreaming is the Datastax Apache Pulsar as a Service offering. Pulsar is a cloud-native streaming and messaging platform that is globally scalable. The Pulsar platform is organized into tenants, namespaces, and topics. A tenant is like an instance of Pulsar. A tenant can contain many namespaces, and namespaces can contain many topics. Topics are like name containers or pipelines of messages. With Pulsar, you can create producers that publish messages to topics. You can also create consumers that, well, consume messages from topics. A third entity known as readers can read and reread messages from topics without consuming them. In this video, we'll show you how to create these Pulsar clients and connect them up. We'll also show you how to use a sync to store messages from Pulsar into an Astra DB table. Enough talk, let's get started. Let's create a tenant. We'll log in Astra and click on the Create Streaming button. We enter a tenant name here. It's up to you what you want to call it. We'll select a service provider, a region, and click the Create Tenant button. That's it. Next, let's create a topic within the tenant. We click on the Topics tab, and then click on the Add Topic button. We enter a topic name, again, whatever you want to call it, and click Save. Now, we are going to create some Pulsar clients. Let's set up some environment variables for our clients. Let's create a variable for the tenant name and one for the topic name. Next, let's store the tenant's service URL in a variable. This URL is where our clients can attach to the tenant. We can copy the service URL to our clipboard by clicking the Connect tab and then clicking here. We'll paste the URL as the value for the variable. Finally, let's create a variable for the tenant access token. Back in the Connect tab, we can copy the token value here. Then paste the token value for the variable like this. That's all the setup we need to do for our Pulsar clients. Next, let's look at the client code. We'll start with the producer. You see that the producer program starts by creating a Pulsar client instance. Then we use that client to create the producer instance. By the way, in this example, we are going to simulate several household appliances generating temperature measurement messages. Here's what the measurement class looks like, with just a sensor, a timestamp, and a measurement value. Back in the producer code, you see a loop producing messages. Our producer will produce 40 messages, but will run three different instances for a total of 120 messages. The code ends by closing the producer and client. Nothing too complicated here. Now let's look at the code for a consumer. You can see the consumer code looks a lot like the producer code, where we start by creating a Pulsar client and use the client to create a consumer. Here's the loop for consuming messages. We see that we plan to consume 60 messages, but we'll run two consumer instances so we consume all 120 messages from the three producers. Notice again that the code ends by closing the consumer and client. The third Pulsar client is a reader. Like a consumer, a reader gets messages from Pulsar, but unlike the consumer, a reader can go back and reread the same messages. You see that this code looks a lot like the consumer code, but we are going to read all 120 messages. These are the same 120 messages read by the consumers, but the tenant stores these for a while so our reader can read them. We see the code closes the resources just like the two previous clients. In addition to the three clients we have just reviewed, Let's create a sync that will write the messages to a table in AstroDB. We'll use the AstroDB REST API to create the table that we'll use for storing the messages. Let's set up some additional environment variables to help access the REST API using curl. In the Astro UI, click on the database name. 
and then click the Connect tab. Click on REST API and then click on the Copy icon. Now, back in the terminal, paste the clipboard contents. You see that we need to add a database access token to the end of the last export command. It's easiest to create the token in a different tab, copy it and paste it on the end of the export command. Then execute the command. We'll create a table named temperatures by timestamp, which has columns just like the fields in our measurement class. This makes the mapping from our class to the table easy. Here's the curl command to create the table. It's a little hard to read because there's no indentation. But here's what the JSON looks like. You see that it describes a table with three columns named, sensor, timestamp, and value, and that the timestamp is the primary key. Here's a curl command that tries to retrieve all of the columns. Of course, it returns no results, yet. Now let's create the sync. Back in the Astro UI, we'll start by clicking on the sync tab. Then click on the create sync button. We'll fill out the form as I'm showing you here. We'll use default as the namespace name and AstroDB as the sync type, but we'll just make up a name for our sync. In the next section, we'll fill out a topic name of our own making. In the third section, we'll specify our AstroDB's database name, key space name, and table name. We need to get a database access token, which we can create if we need to. We'll copy that token and paste it here. Since we already created the table and named our measurement fields with the same name as the columns, as soon as we enter the token, Astra will fill in the mapping for us. We're all set, so we'll click Create. With all the clients ready and the sync in place, it's time to start moving messages around. We'll start the consumers first, each in a separate terminal. Similarly, we'll start the producers in separate terminals. We see that the consumers consume the messages that were enqueued, and then they block waiting for additional messages. And yet another terminal, let's start the reader. The reader looks just like a consumer, except if we look carefully, we see that the reader is reading the same messages the consumers already read. Eventually, the producers will finish sending messages and the consumers will consume them all. The reader also reads all the messages, but we can rerun the reader and see the messages again. On the other hand, rerunning in the consumer causes the consumer to block as no unconsumed messages exist. Let's check out the contents of the database table to see what the sync's been doing. Here's the same command that we used previously, which queries all the records in the table. We see that the Astra streaming sync wrote all the messages to the table. So now you've seen how to use Astra Streaming producers, consumers, readers, and syncs.